Hi guys, welcome to my second instalment of the day. Well, as you can see, I've clearly got too much time on my hands. Um, but I wanted to review this brand new deck that I've just received. Um, I've been on the fence about this deck for a number of years now. Um, because, you know, I've heard about the quality of the, Scott, the cardstock. And once upon a time, I was a cardstock snob. Um, but I'm not anymore. I couldn't care less. Um... And it was my my friend Candy from Candy Soul and Soil who I saw a, a review of it uh, yesterday. And I thought, you know what, that is such a lovely deck um, and I'm going to order it. So I did. And this is the Inner Child Cards and it's called A Fairy Tale Tarot by Isha Lerner and Mark Lerner and illustrated by Christopher Gilfoyle. It's old. Um, it's been out since 1992, um, so that's quite a long time. And so it does make you wonder, you know, if something's been out that long and been reprinted, it must be good. Um, so basically it says on the back of the box at the top, revised edition of the bestseller. The authors have accomplished nothing less than a symbolic miracle. Inner child cards, plucks and plays, resonant chords of emotional memory and the psychic life trapped away in long forgotten childhood stories um and it says in a child card is a divination system that reawakens the child in all of us by gently helping us to interact with the world's most potent archetypes the authors assign an archetypal childhood story to each image in the traditional tarot deck cinderella aligns with the moon card traditionally associated with the power of dreams and visions sleeping beauty parallels to death with its theme of personal metamorphosis. Little Red Cap stands in for the fool, the innocent, and the big bad wolf portrays the devil. Before the age of reason, higher learning was transmitted through archetypal characters in stories and fairy tales. In modern times, these all-important stories have been relegated to a secondary position with no recognition of their deeper meaning. So, basically the deck is based on fairy tales and myths um and everything's an archetype so which is really cool so um let's get on to the cards and the book um it comes in this huge like really really sturdy box um that look probably look really nice on a shelf um and it's one of those slide out boxes as well so um in the box you get the guidebook which is like kind of hefty because the box really weighs heavy. So it is a, wow, there's so much in here as well. Uh, three, 292 pages. Um, so as you can see, it's like quite the guidebook. Um, so we'll have a look um, at the guidebook in a bit uh, when I've showed you some of the cards. Now, okay, let's get on to the... I've just opened them, just quickly had a glance through, um, and I love them. I really, really do love them. Um, I love the vibrancy of the artwork. Right, okay, they are oversized cards, probably a slightly bit bigger than the Thoth Tarot, um, the standard size Thoth, that is. Um, but they're fine. Um, yes, it is really, really, really flimsy thin cardstock. Um, and I think the company, um, is it Des uh, Bear and Company? I think they are the guys responsible for the medicine cards by Jamie Sams. Um, I'm not quite certain about that, but I think they are. Um, so you get 78 cards. Um, you know, there's the back, so like just a navy blue with the sun symbol in the middle. And, you know, you can see how thin the cards are. Is this a deal breaker for me? No, no, it's, it's not at all. I like to riffle shuffle. So, pers you know, personally, like with this big size, um, they'll be fine. Um, and you know what, as well? I mean, sometimes I think some cards really need to be large so you can, like look at the card maybe meditate it meditate with it use it for path working or something like that um and you know if you're particularly like gentle with your cards um the, it won't pose a problem really um i mean i have got cards with uh, thin thin card stock and it's never really uh, bothered me much so you know obviously it's personal preference but i wouldn't mark it down for the thin card stock because i think that's really unfair and so let's have a look what we've got. The deck is an explosion of colour. And I mean an explosion of colour. Um, 
you know i it's so vibrant it's like looking through a child's storybook um the illustrations are so endearing it's not super polished digital artwork it was done back in the day um you know when resources were very very limited um for artists and creators um it looks to me like it's done between a mixture of oil paints watercolors maybe um but you know what it works all the majors have got this like kind of incredible rainbow border all the way around um and i've got the little symbol if you look in the top you've got the number with like a tiny little uh, cameo picture as well you can i don't know whether you can see that excuse me shuffling on my chair as i always do so you can kind of see like you know the vibrancy of the cards and at the bottom you've got little red cap um and let's have a look what the obviously i'm not going to read through this guidebook because it would take me months to do it so inside you've got like kind of everything in alphabetical order um, how to use the deck using the deck with children layouts part two the major so they're all myths and fairy tales here um, and i presume that follows on all the way throughout the deck so little red cap um hold on a second uh so there's loads and loads of information in the front of the book as well and spreads and introduction Oh, and also as well, the majors have just got, so you've got the name of the card, um, the astrological ruler of the card and the keynote. So obviously because this is an inner child deck, um, this you know, the child within, the creative child, wisdom keeper, mother, father and so forth. So I'm just, right, Little Red Cap, often known as Little Red Riding Hood, is a story of childhood innocence, curiosity, excitement at the onset set of a journey oh lovely you know i think everybody loves a fairy tale um you know you can see i presume that's little red cat little red riding zud's grandmother's house um she hasn't yet encountered the wolf but if you look is there behind the tree hiding um and this represents obviously the butterfly represents a free spirit um and her innocence and you know a childlike wonder and curiosity um and you know what it's absolutely beautiful um okay the illustrations may be a little, cr little bit crudely drawn but who cares you know it's just one of those decks that you know you can sit along reading the guidebook it'll probably bring back memories from when you was a child you know when you used to hear these stories and and i just think it's like a really good concept of a deck and i wish i'd have had it years ago now um because there's so much like the, the illustrations as i said very endearing bright um you know so if you're into decks with muty colors this isn't the deck for you um the emperor's new clothes i mean we all have like you know we all re recognize these european like tales um and every different culture has got their own take on the story anyway so this can be used by anyone it would be a great deck for the younger person to learn tarot with its archetypes with um because i mean adults obviously all know the tales i mean that they're embedded in our psyche from from childhood um so like yeah it, it's gorgeous um I haven't even got to put the cards further up to the camera because like they're that big you can see them from like where I'm, I'm the angle I'm sitting so you've got Snow White there as the Hermit Alice in Wonderland as the Wheel of Fortune and what I love the, the little tiny cameos on there as I said before you know you've got like little illustrations there all the majors have got the four sons in the corner as well um so let's have a look and then we've got jack and the beanstalk and sleeping beauty as death the guardian angel as temperance the big bad wolf who was wrapped around the tree in the first one the fool rapunzel wishing upon, wishing upon a star cinderella the yellow brick road and the three little pigs and the earth child so now we come on to the miners now what i did notice when i 
I'll just briefly flick through the deck before I come on. Um, the miners are all, they've all got a border around them to represent that particular suit. So that's the last one and that should be, yeah, the Ace of Swords. So the, the, you've got a butterfly on the ones there and then a two. And it looks to me like a succession of a story. Um, I'm going to have a look in the guidebook is it because these are all like kind of winged uh, fairies. Uh, five and six. Oh, that's lovely. Dancing around the maypole. And seven. And eight. Nine. Ten. And then you've got the child. The seeker is, has been replaced by, you know, for the night. Then you've got the guide and then you've got the guardian. So the guardian is replaced by the king, I presume. So let me have a look to see if there is a thread of a particular fairy tale running through. Um, so we've got magic wands. The magic wands are in accordance with the fire suit in traditional tarot called the wands. Uh... Uh, da, 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 da. The ones open us up to join passion, they beckon us. I just wondered if there was a story. I'll have to look through the book properly when I um but like I mean it looks to me like the kind of is. So let me have a look at the next suit. Um so we've got the swords. Um so again, um you can recognise the swords with the kind of violet and yellow border um so that is obviously something to do with king arthur i presume to how absolutely adorable are these cards they really are um it's just look, look, it look, looks like you're looking through an old fairy tale book um and you could lose yourself in the cards um and obviously if you already know the tales fairy tales anyway you know you could kind of put your own spin on the readings what they mean um but they have still got um very much like a nod to the rider Waite smith anyway um so you know it's it's not difficult to read i'm so looking forward see that follows on from there look i'm so looking forward to delving into the guidebook later um I'm going to sit there with a cup of tea and relish the guidebook from cover to cover. Um, probably not all in one evening. And so you've got the Guardian there and then back to the Ace. So the cups obviously are water based. So we've got seahorses around the borders and the edges. Let me just pull my chair back in. And so we've got like two mermaids there. Um, oh, it's just gorgeous. Um, I think I know somebody, a friend of mine, who will absolutely adore this deck. Um, yeah, you can tell that's like oil paints. Um, so yeah, it's, it's lovely. And there's the seven. The eight. The nine. And the ten. And then we've got the child. The seeker. The guide. Oh, that's really nice. It reminds me of the fairy. Oh, yeah, look. The Emerald City. So, yeah. So, possibly, every look at the, 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 the wings on that kind of, like, angel. Um, God, I thought she was being sick then, right? <laughs> she's... <laughs> She's not. Um, I think it's a hair or my eyesight. I think she's got that trumpet, like, and her arms, <laughs> her arms behind it. Sorry, guys, honestly. Um, so, but like back to the ace, and then obviously the crystals, which is pentacles. Look at the colours, and you've got like elementals, gnomes, obviously representing the earth. Um, balance, you can see in that one as well. But it's kind of a playful, I mean, because, you know, it's a playful deck and, you know, it's supposed to be for inner child work or something similar to that. 
you're not going to get like overtly gruesome images so um it's like quite a family friendly deck as well oh look at these adorable little gnomes absolutely gorgeous really really gorgeous if anything okay a slight critique from me um it would have been okay if there's a reprint of this deck again maybe shrink down the cards a little bit on better quality card stock but it's not a deal breaker as i'm saying i love it as it is i'm super careful with my decks anyway so like i mean it's you know it doesn't bother me and there's santa claus father christmas whoever you want to call him um and that's lovely having like kind of an angel and calling it a guardian and we're back to the beginning so yeah i mean you know it's just a slight critique from me as i said you know it's just like maybe i don't know so it's like this smaller card stock and thicker so i mean i don't know about endurance um i'm not rough with my stuff so uh yeah i mean you can shuffle it overhand anyway watch me like bugger this up no it's fine look um as i said you just have to be super careful but um all in all you know for what you get for the money and i think i paid 17 pound for this you know it, it, it really is a nice little kit and especially like with a guidebook as well i mean you don't often get like really really thick guidebooks like this anymore um so it's well worth investing and if you look at the what was that 30 years old 92 2002 yeah 30 years old so you know there must be like something um in this deck why it's still in print after all this all these years so thanks for watching guys it was just a quick um quick flip through all my thoughts on this um if you love fairy tales if you love mythology if you love to work with archetypes this really is the deck for you if you're a card stop card stock snob um and if you love digitally polished art this deck isn't for you um you know just a quick recap it's right away it's smith based um so it is really easy to read and this phenomenal guidebook so in my opinion it's well worth um every penny i pay for it so thanks for watching again and i'll see you all tomorrow have a great day bye